Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I created this painting, um, this super sweet little giraffe on this nice cradled wood. Um, it took me a couple hours, it took me a little trial and error, but I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing, um, give you a little close up here before we get into it. Hopefully get some of that glare off of there. Um, and I have a big announcement towards the end of the video. I'm gonna tell you all about my upcoming free abundance book club that's gonna be kicking off um, this coming week. Um, and by the time you watch this video, we may have already kicked off with the book club. So um, I go into more detail towards the end of the video and I'll give you all that, so I'll spare you. Let's go ahead and jump into it and I'll see you soon, bye. Like I said, this was not a totally intuitive piece. Um, I painted this for someone really special and I did have a plan going into it of what I wanted to create. I really didn't start with a sketch um, or anything. I just gessoed my wood panel and just started to go at it. So um, I really didn't plan like a whole, um, composition or anything like that. I just knew that I wanted to go with um, a really soft giraffe over some kind of loose boho flowers. Um, so what I did was I gessoed the wood panel, um, put a couple coats of gesso on there, and then I just made myself um, a really thin uh, pot <laughs> of golden fluid acrylic. And for this I used um, I believe it was burnt umber maybe, and a little bit of phthalo green or phthalo blue. Um, I just wanted to get some dark kind of layers down so that I knew what I was working with and could kind of plan things out. Um, and it actually ended up being a little darker than I intended the um, for the underpainting, but it actually it ended up working out for me. So um, it was kind of a happy accident that when I went to squirt the phthalo blue, it just went everywhere um, and way more of it came out than I intended. So, um, but like you, you can see, I really, I needed the dark underpainting. So it really worked out really well for me. <clears throat> and then I went through with some of the golden high flow acrylics and just got a good coat for my background. Um, I knew I wanted warm tones in the underpainting in the background. Um, so I just kind of started layering those in and getting some, just kind of messing it up and getting some layers in there so that I could start to work in over top of it. And what I'm actually doing here is just finger painting in some of the flower shapes so that I can get an idea of where I want those to go. And of course, as that dried, I lost most of those, but at least it gave me an idea of kind of what I was planning and I could loosely kind of shape in some flowers. This was, this piece is really a lot of fun. I hadn't painted animals in a while um, and I've really been wanting to. So this was a great kind of a really good excuse to get back into painting some animal portraits and just some loose, fun paintings. Unfortunately, I don't remember what colors I used for everything because I did record this a few weeks ago. So it's taken me a little while to get around um, to getting the audio uh, recorded for this so that I can get the video up to you guys. But um, I just went with some really earthy, warm, kind of rusty tones um, for my reds and then just used some uh, titanium white to highlight those flowers. And uh, they really weren't working for me at first. I just kind of made little puddles, <laughs> little red and orange puddles at first, but it's okay. I really just wanted to get the shapes on here um, and get an idea of what I was going with. I did use some titanium buff. Um, as you can see that on the far right side of the palette. I did use titanium buff to go in and um, 
kind of homogenize the background and push things back a little bit so that the um, giraffe and the flowers would come forward more. And I really, really love this titanium buff. I think it's um, Abstract is the brand. I really love these um, paints. I bought them or I got them for Christmas and we got them at Jerry's Arts, Jerry's Artorama. And I, I thought they were really cool because they came in like these plastic little, um, almost like a baggie, really like a thick plastic baggie. So you could really like squeeze out every last drop. Um, and I wasn't really sure about them because they honestly, they looked a little cheap, but I'm, I'm loving them. I thought it did a really good job of covering the background and I really like when I'm going with a color like this, like this titanium buff, I really like it to be very opaque. And that's what I was worried about with these colors. Like I wasn't, I just didn't know anything about the brand. So I really wasn't sure what I was getting into. Um, but it were, I thought it worked out great. I really love the coverage that I got with the, with these, um, with these, this brand. And you can see like as soon as I start to fill in that background, my I feel like my composition really started to take shape and things started to make a lot more sense to me. I had a lot of fun with these, uh, with the foliage here. I went in really dark at first, I'm using more of this thalo blue, thalo green that I had mixed up. I had so much of it kind of just out on my palette and all over the place. So I was like, this is the perfect color because it really, it's got those really deep blue green tones. And I felt like it was a great contrast to the really warm, rusty tones I was going for in my flowers and also in the giraffes. I felt like it was just a really good um, color to contrast everything. I honestly, I, I feel like these little leaves might be my favorite part of the whole painting. Putting in the little highlights. Leaves and, and flowers in general are something that I really have a tendency to want to overwork. So I was really trying to stay very loose with this painting. I have, it took me, I would say at least two hours um, to finish this one. So it did take me a good little stretch, but I was still trying to be very loose with it and not, you know, get overly precious with anything or overly particular about anything. I really just wanted to keep with that like very loose, flowy kind of boho vibe. Um, Cause that's what, uh, that's what they're going for. The person who's who I painted this for. Um, that's kind of the 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 theme that they have. So I wanted to keep it really soft and flowy and um, not get too rigid with anything. And this flower, I had so much fun creating this one in particular um, because it was just such a weird shape, and I just kept kind of putting in those layers over and over. Sorry, my chair is squeaky. Um, <laughs> putting in those layers over and over um, each other. I'm trying to really create that, that depth that I was looking for. And then just trying out different brushes to see if I could get um, that kind of soft, wispy effect on the edges. I'm such a nerd. I really love to go back and watch the, these videos of the process because it's so much fun for me to see like how things evolve. I love these like almost 
I don't know, muted raspberry is like the color it felt like I was getting in this flower with like these frosty tips. I just loved that. I'm just going in for some more highlights. I really had a lot of fun with this one. And I put off these flowers for a while, the roses, because I was really intimidated. Because <laughs> I wanted to get them just right. And I wanted them to, I didn't want to have too many dark tones. I wanted them to feel very like bright and soft. Um, and we'll get there. But yeah, I, I definitely was kind of nervous to jump into those. And I, when I do paint roses, I love to finger paint my roses like this because I feel like it gives you like a really nice soft kind of shape and then you can go back in later with your brush and start to define things. I don't know if you guys can hear but Agnes is asleep on the floor and she is snoring. Going back with a, a nice deep red here, I'm trying to get some, actually that might be my nickel azo gold. I think that's the one I went in with here, trying to get some deeper tones there. Mixing up a little purple shade. And for all of these, every time I get a color, if it feels too bright um, or too saturated, then I'm just going in with a compliment to try and desaturate them a little bit. But you can see like how just that little bit that I went back with with the brush really starts to give those roses shape after we put those darker shades and tones up underneath. And then I'm going in here with a, this is more of a wash. So I'm using the um, golden I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's a golden fluid. Um, I can't remember exactly the, what the what the title of it is, but it it, it helps you create like a wash um, or like a glaze. That's what it is. It's a fluid glaze. Sorry. Um, so I'm, I was going in with that, and that was helping me kind of highlight with the glaze different um, parts of those roses. This really was such a fun piece to do. And I just love painting on these wood panels. I hardly ever paint on canvas anymore um, just because this wood is such a nice solid surface. It doesn't give me any resistance like canvas does. So I feel like it can like really get in there. And you guys know I'm, I'm kind of rough on my surfaces. So it really stands up to all the abuse that I just know I'm gonna give it. And I am just obsessed with this flower on the left. I love how that turned out. I'm trying to soften some things up up there. I like my background to be opaque, um, but I also like it to be a little messy. I don't want one solid wash of color in the background. I really like for there to be some texture at least, right? And even though it's opaque, I like there to be little spots where you can see bits and pieces of what was behind it. And as I get into the um, the actual giraffe, I'm really gonna like push that background um, a lot, kind of pulling it back and forth and and uh, making it work together. And 
I pause the video as I'm letting parts of it dry. So I don't want to waste your time listening to my blow dryer or my heat gun. So I do pause the video in between that. But other than that, this is pretty much start to finish. And then finally finish, pretty much finish with those roses. Um, this is where I start to go back in and shape out the lighter parts of our giraffe so that I can start to get those colors right. two titanium buffs uh, one had more of a pink shade to it and that's what I used on the background and then the one that has more of a, a flesh tone um, more of a yellowish tint to it that's I'm using both here for the giraffe but I'm kind of blending them together because I felt like that would give me a better base color for the giraffe actually use my heat gun here as I was going because I wanted parts of this to dry really quickly. My favorite thing about painting this way, whether it's purely intuitively or just really loosely like this is you know, especially with acrylic paints is you can just keep going. And if you get to a point where you feel like something's not working or you've worked it to death, especially on a wood surface like this, I can just dr let it dry and start over, right? I can just paint over it. Um, on paper, that's a little more difficult because paper can only take so much abuse. But um, when I'm working on a wood surface like this, like I don't, I feel like I have more freedom because I'm not as worried about getting it right, right? And that's why I like to paint this way. I like to paint with that, um, without that pressure of like it needing to be right or it needing to be a certain thing. Um, it's really, and that's like, I mean, that's where all the freedom in painting this way comes from is knowing that it's just, you just keep going until you get what you're looking for, right? And sometimes that's not what you thought it was going to be. Sometimes it's going to come out different. I just love these colors in this piece. And I did go back and forth a lot with this giraffe's colors and the spots and the shading and the highlights, just trying to get that perfect. But sometimes I use titanium white um, as my white and then sometimes I just use gesso as my white. It really just depends on what I'm going for. My titanium white has more of a glossy um, finish and the gesso is going to be more matte um, and kind of chalky so I'm not sure which one I used here um, <clears throat> it feels like actually I'm pretty pretty sure that's titanium white and then I just went in and put in the um, shadows inside the ears and one of the cool things about not trying to make it super realistic right is you can be really creative and you can make really fun decisions about the colors that you use right so the insides of a giraffe's ears are probably not blue green right but I decided that this one's were gonna be right so it's like you get to make those choices and you get it you know when it's more like light and kind of flowy and um there's just there when you're when you're painting in that more relaxed kind of way and taking the pressure off yourself like you get to make you realize and you understand that you get to make so many choices about what you're creating and that you are ultimately in control and that's why i think um intuitive painting and painting in this style translates so well to 
when we're talking about like manifesting and what we're creating in our lives, because to me, it's the same thing. Like the more I can learn to release and surrender when I'm painting, the more I understand and kind of get that like, oh, duh, you know, like the more I can release and surrender things in life, the more easily they flow, right? And the often the more fun you have with it. I do a lot of finger painting. you made it this far would love to hear what you think about it and of course like follow comment share <laughs> all the things right oh I forgot to mention um, I am starting a book club we're going to be, I'm going to launch next week. If you're watching this video, it may have already launched. Um, I don't even know what day or time yet. So just stay tuned. But um, we are going to start a book club and we'll be meeting here on YouTube. I'll be broadcasting live once a week. Um, and we're just going to move through different spiritual development books, law of attraction, um, money, mindset, healing, all of the things, right? So I'm super excited. I have tons of books um, on mindset and spiritual development and personal development. And I just have so much that I feel like I just want to share with you guys. And you know, sometimes it's a lot easier and more fun to read those books together rather than by yourself. I know when I'm reading by myself, I have a tendency to fall asleep. So I thought this would be perfect because we can come together, whether you're joining us live or catching us on the replay, we can come together and move through some of these, um, these books and theories and um, all of this together. And, and uh, I don't know, just have fun with it. So stick around, stay tuned for that. It's either already here by the time you watch this or it's coming very soon. My favorite part when I'm painting animals or people um, is when we go in and put the whites in the eyes, the highlights, um, the reflections in the eyes, because I feel like that's what really wakes up the person or the creature or whatever you're working on. Um, I feel like that's what really wakes them up and really brings them to life. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 